Hello, good people of Fully Charged. Today, we're talking about charging. And specifically, we're talking about living with and charging an electric car without access to your own driveway and charger. I mean, is it even practical? Can it even be done? Spoiler alert. Yeah. That's fine. I do it. But if you're new to all this, I do appreciate that charging is probably the most daunting aspect of EV ownership. It is, after all, the thing that is the most different about it versus ICE car ownership. There's a million different charging companies and some only do rapid chargers, some only do slow chargers, some need apps and some have membership cards. And if you're new to all of this, it can be a little bit daunting and off-putting, especially if you don't have your own charger, meaning you're gonna be relying entirely on the public charging network. Well, today we're gonna make it simple. What does living with an electric car without access to your own charger actually looks like? What technology exists to make it easier? And what technology is coming in the future to make it easier still? This is an idiot's guide to charging without your own charger. This is an idiot. And this is The Fully Charged Show. Like The Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. Now, as we all know, the ideal way to charge an electric car is at home, overnight, while you're sleeping. It's the cheapest way, it's the most convenient way, you wake up with a full tank, lovely. And this is why if you do have your own driveway or your own dedicated parking space where you are able to install your own charger, you're absolutely laughing. Because the only times that you're ever going to have to even interact with the public charging network is on those hopefully few occasions where the trip that you are taking exceeds the range of your electric vehicle. And this is why on average, 90% of all charging happens at home. But what if you don't have your own driveway? Does this mean that you are doomed to an existence sat in your car at motorway service stations, plugged into rapid chargers, inhaling Greg's sausage rolls while you wait for your car to charge? That actually doesn't sound that bad. And the short answer is no, absolutely not. Because even if you don't have your own charger, there is still a good chance that you can get the vast majority of your charging done while you're at home, sleeping. How? Well, there's a number of answers to that, which I will now take you through, but we'll start with the most obvious one, and one that applies primarily to city dwellers like myself, and that is public on-street chargers. Now, I always encourage people to think of the charging network as two distinct charging networks. First, there is the network of rapid chargers, typically located at motorway service stations. And really, these should be viewed as a last resort. Yes, they're the fastest, but they're also the most expensive. And really, they are there to give you just enough juice to get you where you're going. The second and potentially more important charging network is the one of slower on-street chargers typically located in residential areas. These are designed to be used all day long or all night. So which means that they'll be able to fully charge an electric car in somewhere between eight to 14 hours, obviously massive give or take there, depending on the size of your battery and how empty it is. Now in London, a lot of on-street chargers are actually mounted onto lamp posts. There's a bunch of companies doing it this way, including Ubertricity and Chargelight. And this is a great way of installing chargers because they're faster and cheaper to install and they don't cause any additional clutter on the pavement for EV haters to whinge about. The downside to these lamppost mounted chargers is that, well, you can only install them where lampposts are. And also in my experience, these type of chargers don't come with their own dedicated parking space, which is to say you need to get lucky and have a parking space be available within cable's reach in order to use it. Some days you're gonna show up and a big diesel thing is gonna be using that space that you want. There's a guy on my road that drives a Hummer and I am convinced that he does this on purpose. Also, no dedicated parking space means that you are at the mercy of local residential parking zones and times if that applies where you live. And then you've got standalone chargers, which tend to be some sort of sticky outy thing protruding from the pavement. The advantage of these is you can build them pretty much anywhere. And generally they do come with their own dedicated parking space, which is to say Hummer boy can't park there. The downside is that they do take a little longer to get built. They require a little bit of extra council clearance, which just makes everything take longer and they are more expensive to install. There are also some really innovative companies doing some really cool on-street charging that actually blurs the lines between these two types. 
Trojan Energy and Urban Electric are two companies that have recently started installing on-street chargers which are actually hidden in the pavement and pop out only when needed. They're as stealthy as lamppost mounted chargers but can be installed anywhere. So cool. Now I think at this stage it might be useful to go through a case study. Mine. I live in Hackney in East London. I drive a Polestar 2. I do not have access to my own driveway or charger. So how do I charge? Well, fortunately for me, there is a selection of on-street slow chargers within walking distance from my front door. And having shopped around a bit and tried a few different ones, I now have a plan A and plan B charger that I rely on. My favorite charger is actually directly outside my front door. It's mounted in a lamppost and it's a good day when I get to use this charger. It doesn't happen as often as I like because again, it doesn't have a dedicated parking space. I have to get lucky, come home and find a space within cable's reach. And because my road is so busy, that doesn't actually happen, especially often. But when it does, oh, when I get to come home, park up directly outside my house, plug in, scan the QR code, Apple Pay, charge, wake up in the morning with my car outside my front door, fully charged. Beautiful. My plan B charger is the one I use by far the most. This one is a bit further away, about a kilometer from my front door, so a 10 minute stroll. And it is a bank of three standalone chargers with their own dedicated parking spaces. This one works a bit differently. It's a different company. For this one, I have a membership card that I tap. I pay a small monthly fee for a reduced charging rate. Tap your card, Bob's your uncle, you're away. And that is the incredibly unremarkable story of how I go about charging my car without access to my own charger. Even though I do lots and lots of miles for work, it's pretty rare that I exceed the 250 odd mile range of my Polestar inside one trip. So easily 95% of my charging is done between these two chargers. So if you live somewhere where there are public on-street chargers a walking distance away from your front door, I encourage you to do what I did. Do a bit of shopping around, get yourself a plan A, a plan B, maybe even a last resort plan C charger and embrace the stroll. I know it sounds a bit tedious having to schlep 10 minutes in order to fetch your car in the morning, but I've really grown to enjoy it. I have a bad tendency of falling out of bed and just starting working, but this forces me to get outside, get a lung full of fresh air, grab a very expensive tiny coffee, and it's kind of part of my morning routine now. But what, I hear you ask, if I don't live in an insufferably hipster part of East London and I don't have a selection of on-street public chargers walking distance from my gaff, well, fear not, there are other options available. And this is where things get really innovative and creative. There's a couple of companies I would like to highlight in particular. Please be aware, no one paid to be involved in this video. I just want to spread the good word of companies doing cool work. Firstly, CoCharger. Think of these guys sort of like the Airbnb of charging. Most people only charge their electric car around once or twice a week, which means that most home chargers are unused most of the time. CoCharger allows people with their own driveway and charger to rent it out to their neighbors for a fee. Everyone's a winner. Those who need a charge, get a charge, and those who have access to their own charger make a little bit of money and also get a warm gooey feeling from knowing they are helping accelerate the growth of electric vehicles. And then there's Charge Fairy. I love this idea. This is only available for certain OEMs at the moment, but it is just so cool. These guys will monitor the charge status of your car from afar. And when they detect that you're in need of a charge, they will drive to you in a van with a big battery in the back, pop open your charge port using their phone, plug you in, charge you up, and then drive off. You don't even have to be there. They've got nice long cables so that they can still reach you and plug you in even if there's a couple of cars parked up next to yours. And yes, all of their vans are electric. Be good if they were big honking diesels, wouldn't it? And I do appreciate that these are increasingly UK specific solutions, but rest assured, there are innovative companies doing work like this around the world. That's something that's become really apparent to me from attending Fully Charged Live Amsterdam and San Diego. Wherever you are, there are people doing really cool things to ensure that charging is easier and easier. Now here's another innovative charging solution. This one is specifically for people who don't have public on-street charging in their vicinity, but perhaps live somewhere a little bit quieter and off the beaten track where they are able to park directly outside their house reasonably often. Now in that scenario, you may well be tempted to feed a cable through the window of your front room across the pavement, plug your car in off the mains. 
but that leaves a trailing cable and that is a death trap for old people. But not with Kerbo. This is one of those ideas that is so beautifully simple that I wish I'd thought of it myself. What Kerbo do is drill a little gutter in the pavement from your house to where your car is often parked with a little flappy lid. When you want to charge, you feed the cable out your window, lift up the lid, pop the cable in, pop it down, plug in. Simple, no trip hazard. Now with this, you could even mount a seven kilowatt home charger to the front of your gaff and just charge that way. It's beautiful. Honorable mention also to a company called Charge Bridge, who have a very similar technology, except it's airborne. It sort of goes above the pavement, above your head. Love that. And if none of this suits your requirements, well, there is always the rapid charger network. It's not ideal, but if your weekly mileage isn't especially high, this is still a totally doable way of getting a charge. And it doesn't have to be inconvenient. You don't want to be sat in your car watching it charge. That is the worst case scenario. So my advice here, if the only charging options available to you in your vicinity are rapid chargers, is look for one that's got a supermarket or a gym within walking distance of it and just make it part of your weekly routine. Find a way of being busy doing something else while your car is charging. The key takeaway from this video, I hope, is that living with an electric car, charging an electric car without your own driveway is totally doable. It doesn't have to be a nuisance. I do fully appreciate that there are still parts of the world, even parts of the UK, where owning and running an electric car just isn't logistically viable still. But those parts are shrinking very, very quickly, thanks to some very innovative companies doing some really cool stuff to ensure that everyone can get a charge. So what happens next? Well, we need a lot more chargers. We need to keep on rolling these things out to keep up with the surging popularity of electric vehicles. And when I've spoken in the past to CEOs of charging companies, they always cite the same thing as the bottleneck, slowing down their ability to install on-street charging, and that's local councils. So if you are frustrated by the lack of on-street charging where you live, my advice is to make your voice heard. Contact the local council and tell them, we need more charges, mate. And just from a tech point of view, there is some seriously cool stuff on the way that is going to make this even easier. I'll just run through a few very quickly. Firstly, there is wireless charging and battery swapping technology. These are two things that we looked at in detail when we went to Oslo earlier this year. Wireless charging, I am certain, is going to play a key role in electrifying our public transport, our cabs, basically anything that runs on a predictable loop, but it could have a part to play with privately owned electric vehicles too, potentially. What I do think is definitely going to have a key part in making charging easier for everyone is vehicle to vehicle charging. The ability to just buy some energy off your neighbor when their car is full and they don't have much driving to do that week. This is something that Sono Motors has really baked into the design of their lovely little Scion solar car. The ability to just sell off some energy to your mates when your car's sat outside your house all week and you're away on a trip and you're not using it. That energy is going spare, so sell it off, share it with someone else. And just think, if this technology were to become widespread, if every residential street had two or three electric cars on it that were selling 10 to 25 kilowatt hours of energy at any given time, getting a charge would just become that little bit easier. Bottom line, living with an electric car, without your own driveway, without your own charger, is entirely possible. In fact, for most people, like myself, it's downright straightforward and it's only going to get easier. Now, is there an especially innovative charging company or technology that you feel I missed out in this video? If so, please let me know in the comments below. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.